neither a hero nor do you want to be saved I'm the Lux to your Superman Wishing I was Lois Lane And how many times have you tried to stop me? God, I just don't know Hello everybody my name's Dick Coughlin, aka Brother Neuro, aka your favourite YouTuber's favourite YouTuber. And because I've been a little bit, well, quite a lot lazy when it comes to the uh, videos over the last couple of months, and because I really need to do pick it up, and I feel like I owe you a little bit more, today I decided to throw together, well, I say throw together, put together craft like a genius. Uh, one of my Neuro Clock News, Dicks O'Clock News, whatever the fuck you want to call it, I don't really care. It's me going through the news and losing my goddamn mind, as is the dance of life, ladies and gentlemen. There's no news in here about Trump, there's no news about Brexit, Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, Republic, none of that. There's none of the stuff you see all over the place. Despite that, this video is going to show you that even when you ignore all of the worst, most powerful people in the world, Everyone waiting below is just as fucking bad, if not worse. So, it should be fun, eh? Let's crack on, shall we? And I would like to thank this video's sponsor, the people who are bringing you this video, nobody. If, uh, I, if you would like to support me on Patreon, if you would like to support me by making a donation, Patreon and PayPal are in the bottom there. That would be helpful. And just an FYI, I'm currently sat here, cross-legged, with, with pillows under my arse, because thanks to my peripheral neuropathy, which has paralysed the nerves in my feet, the other day I had to go to the hospital because it turned, I took my shoes off and my bottom of my big toes were swollen and red, my ankle was swollen, turns out I've broken bones in all of them. And I've been walking around like fucking, like an absolute gangster. Anyway, let's move on with the news, let's get on with the video. Video, right, now remember, remember this video, no Brexit, no, bre no Brexit, there'll be no Brexit. None. Is it time to drop the cannibalism taboo? Psychologists say eating members of the same species is natural and we could adapt to human flesh if need be. It's not about Brexit, that. T nothing. What do you mean, the cannibalism taboo? Like it's swearing in front of your nan. Oh, you, you, oh, I see, you, you've, you've been eating human beings, have you? That's a bit of a faux pas there, Gary. We are truly fucked, aren't we? Saying that, maybe that wouldn't have been so bad for this next guy in this next story, which was reported in Sky News. This one's just a bit odd. Teen left blind and deaf after living off crisps, chips, and white bread. Now, I might not seem like the kind of guy who should be able to sit here and lecture people on their health, but however unhealthy I've been, I can still fucking see. So this lad, who was uh, 17, uh, who apparently has some condition where he like, it turns him into like a ex super extreme fussy eater. But it's, it's called nu uh, nu nutritional optic neuropathy. My brother. And because this, this guy is my brother in neuropathy. We are both, you've got, we're both N-words, as we like to prefer to be called it. Because of that, uh, I'm allowed to make fun of him and you're, you can't complain, so... Ah! A teenage boy went blind and partially deaf after living off a diet of chicks, bangers, crisps and, uh, and white bread for the past decade. The British boy, who has remained anonymous, has he chosen to remain anonymous or did you ask him what his name was and he couldn't hear or see you? He had such a diet because he suffered from a, a condition normally only seen in malnourished third world countries. Right, the last person who had this fucking condition, right, was some, had Bob Geldof doing a concert for him. He is believed to be the first case in the UK. Get him, son. The unnamed patient from the West Country developed bone weakness. I didn't know Pringles could make your bones dissolve. He's from the West Country. Are we sure this isn't like a little bit of... Also, word of advice to his mother. If we do end up uh, taking up cannibalism in this country and, uh, you know, it, it spreads uh, very popular, I'd keep your son indoors. He's going to be easy pickings. Anyway, let's move from one extreme 
all the way to the other. Now, on the, the, in these news videos, I have done a couple of stories purely by chance of uh, people who are, be who are vegan. Just check out this headline. Vegan takes neighbours to court over the smell of the barbecue. That's just obviously right. This is a very lonely woman, right? Okay, this is, this is a fit. Taking someone to court over the smell of a barbecue. Okay, um, whatever. Okay, so, but here's, here's the best bit. Let's just check out this first sentence, right? A vegan masseuse has taken her neighbours to court in Australia for having barbecue. Australia. This woman is vegan, fair enough. She's Australian, okay? But she's, she wants to sue her neighbours, who are Australian, by the way, which is a country of a, with the, where the sun is three quarters of a mile away from the surface and meat just spontaneously combusts. Scylla Carden says fumes from meat wafting from next door are ruining the quality of life in, in the Perth suburb of Girreen. <coughs> are wafting in. Yeah, they're not doing it to wind you up, love. That's how air works. That's just nature. All I can smell is fish. I'm not, go I'm not even going to go there. See, when I was like, if this was 15 years ago, I'd have said something. Like, All I can smell is fish. I'm, I'm, but I'm not saying that. I can't enjoy my backyard, I can't go out. Is this like, how have you got, a, how are you alive? I haven't been able to sleep, so you can't see. How often do these people barbecue? Are they, do they just chuck cows onto a bonfire? In a 400 page, 400 page dossier of evidence, that's the same size as the Mueller report. Presented to judges, she also said her neighbours on both sides of the property, it's on both sides, bad people on both sides, smoked on their patio and sometimes had lights on in the evening. Fucking hell! Smoked on their patio? Where are they supposed to smoke? You can't smoke indoors. What do you want smokers to do? D dig a tunnel? I tell you what, you wouldn't want to kick your fucking football into this bitch's back garden, would you? Complaining about the smell of meat and she's a vegan masseuse. You just know, I guarantee you, this woman has got a self-composting toilet. I just They're probably only having a barbecue to cover up the smell of shit. The children, she added, made a noise while playing with their toys in the garden. You're in Australia. <laughs> Scylla. Darling, you're in, you're in Australia. Australia has a landmass the same size as America, but a population of 24 million. You could literally find a place and go and live on your own with no one from f for fucking miles around. You could do that. Why have you chosen to live next door to human beings? But, good news, the State Administrative Tribunal in Western Australia rejected her claims, thank God, that there was any breach of residential law. The volume of material that she has produced suggests that these matters have, to an extent, become somewhat overwhelming. What that is, right, that's the most polite and, 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 you know, and nicest way he can say, darling, go and get laid. Right, seriously, just get some, get, get a load of geezers in and have a fucking train. Now, this next story comes from the Sun newspaper, who, I don't need to explain to you what the Sun newspaper is and what it's like. However, uh, this fat story I just found fascinating for a very different reason. Lost biblical town where Jesus was resurrected after the crucifixion found, archaeologists claim. Do they? Do they? Archaeologists, like proper ones, not just some cunt with a metal detector who fucking accidentally stumbled upon something. No, actual archaeologists have said, this is where Jesus was. Now, this was a town that is a, a part in the Bible, obviously, uh, discovered by French and Israeli archaeologists. And um, it's a t I can't believe I'm pronouncing it right. Emmaus, Emmaus, obviously. But this, I'll, I'll just show you what the sun is saying. But you know, bearing in mind how they've, how they've solved this one. Um, here's what you need to know about the biblical town. This is what we need to know. This is what the biggest selling daily English language newspaper in the world has decided we need to know. According to the New Testament of the Bible, thanks for clarifying, the road to Emmaus is one of the first places that Jesus appears after his resurrection from being crucified. It was a very short local tour, but yeah. The Bible states that two disciples were walking towards Emmaus 
when they met Jesus. Really? Wow! The Bible states that they didn't recognise him at first and spoke about their sadness at his death. They meet a guy who they don't recognise, who, who was Jesus, who at the time, not many celebrities around. It's not like he was someone on season 12 of Big Brother who got out first. It's not like he was an extra, you know, a backing, an extra or background actor in fucking story junkers. He's Jesus. He's just died. Does anyone else just think that sounds bollocks? They persuaded him to come for dinner. And this is sounding really fucking weird. They uh, come to dinner with them. And once they had reached him house and had sat down to eat, they realised who he was. Bet they felt like a right pair of cunts. So saith the Lord. It is widely thought by scholars that Cleopas was one of the two disciples that was said to meet Jesus at Emmaus. But the name of the other disciple is still debated. The rest of it, by the that is the one thing. This is the new, this is the one of the worst newspapers in the world, in the country by far, when it comes to printing, for, this is a paper that even, it's the Fifty Shades of Grey of tabloids. Like, you know how everyone thought Fifty Shades of Grey was shit, but it was either shit in a way that made you hate it, or shit in a way that made you love it. That's the Sun newspaper. Everybody knows it's bullshit. This is a story, they are reporting on events in the Bible as if they are completely true. Now the Bible is probably as reliable a source as any compared to the ones they've got. This is a paper that when you pick it up every day it tells you thing, it tells you about events that happened within less than 12 hours of it going printing and you can't even believe a word of that. But now the Bible is fact. Okay, apart from the other disciple's name. Fucking hell. Now, this is a bit of a weird, convoluted story, and let me just tell you as it happened. Recently in China, they've been having their version of the Olympics, which is called the Chinese Athletics Championships. Very original, lads. One of the events they had, which is they have in all of them, is the 4 by 400 meters relay race. And I'm sure they love, they probably call it something else, they probably don't call it a relay race, for reasons that I'm not going to demonstrate. The, a picture went around, the team that won the Chinese, I'm assuming the country that won was China, but um, yeah, so, and anyway, this is the picture of the four, of the four people who won that race. Now, this, this was the woman's event, I've got to tell you, this was the woman's event, those four people won it. Now, if you're sat there, Thinking, thinking something and that you're not sure you should be or it's wrong, it's okay. Everyone probably did. I know I did. I think some of the things I think and don't say, oh my God, they make it, the, you don't want to know. Oh, fuck me, I would be so, mm. uh. So this picture's going around and this starts this debate online, this discussion as to whether these are actually uh, uh, all women. We're not, they're not going to say they're all they're all, they're all men, but they, they could be, they could be, they don't know. Um, but what's funny is that no one thought to ask them, um, or look it up. One particular person, who you've probably never heard of, eh, who, who decided to try, who looked at the picture and uh, worked it out, was a woman called Ms. He Ms. Ms. Helen Watts. I wonder, I wonder whether that Twitter handle name's gonna change, Ms. Helen Watts. According to Ms. Helen Watts' uh, t Twitter, uh, Twitter description, she is the former leader of Girl Guiding. Wow. Um, still tags them, obviously, so she's obviously gone on and done well, she's totally not bitter about it at all. She was expelled for saying, female is not a feeling. Sis is a slur. All right, okay. Labour lost me. Oh. Still on the left, good for you. Women's rights are human rights. She is just knocking out some proper... I mean, you, you're, quite frankly, that is some... I wouldn't even go near that. I mean, I wouldn't even have the gall to sit there. Because, I mean, I'm at the stage like most men, who are even the most, you know, you know most you know, egalitarian uh, male feminists, I'm at the point where I'm comfortable, which is I treat women as if they are equal to men. Trans exclusionary radical feminists. So, if you are a feminist activist and you have 
issues with people who are transgender being part of your movement and you, you know, focus on that primarily rather than, I don't know, what, the, what men are doing in, while we're running the fucking place, then that's what you are. You're a TERF. T-E-R-F. Um, I never heard cis being a slur. Um, why is it a slur? Oh, it's a slur because it's the opposite of trans, which I'm assuming you think ain't real. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, my favourite one when the people, I love it when women, the, see this is a woman who thinks that, you know, who thinks that cis is, a, is an offensive slur, or that turf is misogynistic. If you're a woman and you think the words turf and cis are misogynistic slurs, then you have not had enough men insult you properly. I said, and I think that's probably because you've been single for a long time. But anyway, moving on, Ms. Helen Watts decided she was going to, she, she, she'd looked it out, she's got all the, you know, she's got like, you know, fake trans data, I don't know, but she, even though these people are Chinese, which let's face it, makes this really fucking hard, she was able to come in and she, she chimed in with this issue, because obviously trans gender people, the issue of people who are transgender in sports has become a really hot topic, which is just really, really precious and cute. Good for you. It's, at least it's better than arguing about where, where they can have a shit, I suppose. But she chimed right in. She just, just look at this on Twitter. Man, no, woman, man, 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 man. Goodbye, women's athletics. <laughs> Imagine if you only saw the text of that tweet. Woman, man, man, man. Goodbye, women's athletics. Cut my life into pieces. But, so she's looking at these but go, goes, woman, man, man, man. Or, as, li oh, as us left-wingers call it, marriage in the future. She stuck a couple of dogs in there, you know, while we're dressed as Batman, covered in mine. It turns out, you know, guess what? It turns out all of these people, all four of them, they're all women. I know, they're all women, they just happen to look, you know, they happen to have, not have, they don't have things like tits and asses and stuff, and um, clearly not much in the in the way down in the, those are very tight shorts shorts you know and I'm not busting on them it probably makes them more aerodynamic now, this is why Linford Christie can only do the hundred meters we all remember the lunchbox flopping side to side he must have had terrible thigh issues but anyway so yeah so this woman then having sort of gone in there having dived first clunge first into the abyss and this woman diving clunge first into the abyss it's definitely the abyss looking back at you, but the, she uh, she got rinsed, which is why you can see her Twitter account was on had a padlock because that's what you do when you are you say something on the internet and um, and you're not a bigot, you're not a bigot at all, you're not you're not bigoted at all, you know, you're not you're not you don't have a problem. you just don't you couldn't you can't admit you're wrong, you're not bitter though, you're definitely not bitter. I do have to say this though. I do have to say this, and some people are going to complain about this because they don't like it when I do this, but this is just a bit of taste of the own medicine. I'm curious to know. She says in the thing, woman, man, 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 goodbye. Goodbye, woman's athletics. Goodbye, woman's athletics. With all due respect, Helen, and I say that with, with absolutely no irony, with all due respect, you don't look like a woman who's ever really appreciated athletics on any level, until you thought there were three Chinese geezers getting involved in the women's division. I'm just saying, I'm wondering what, what exactly, what events could you do, really, in the, uh, in the athletics? Hmm? So, you said goodbye to women's athletics and hello to pie and chips long ago. But anyway, anyway, let, let's get on with some real fucking news, shall we? Let's look at this. This story was reported in the uh, Daily Mail, and, and just, just, you know, keep yourselves, because this has been swept under the rug, and just, just strap yourselves in, folks. This was in the Daily Mirror. Uh, people baffled to discover where Germans put washing machines, and it's not kitchen. And it's not kitchen. That's not even a sentence, but, you know, fuck it, I'll blush over that. I know, you, you stick with it, folks. Pretty much every kitchen in the UK contains a few items. Fridge, oven, and a washing machine. If you've got more, if you've got, if you've got more space, 
If who wrote this fuck? This is the Daily Mirror. This is like the second or third biggest selling newspaper. If you've got got space, you might have some extra appliances like a dishwasher. I know how a fucking kitchen works, right? But in Germany, you know those people we beat during the war. No help from no one else. Homeowners don't keep their washing machines in the kitchen. I oh, know I'm on the edge of my fucking seat. Instead, having them fitted in a different room in the house. Photos of the setup has Brits, has baffled Brits. But let's have a look. Let's have a look and see whether. Oh my God! Well, this definitely isn't. That definitely isn't kitchen, is it? No, that's not the kit. That looks like the bathroom. Oh my God! What the fuck? These people are insane. Oh my God! Look at them. It looks a bit weird. It doesn't look weird at all. Why is this in the fucking news? Why? They keep the dish, they keep the dish, they keep the washing machine in the, in the bathroom where they wash everything. You're right, it makes more sense. So what's the point? Whoever wrote this article, I hope you die in a car crash. Now let's go and look at some nutter on Twitter saying something ridiculous about race. And not that I should expect anything too much from this guy. This guy is a name called Chuck Woolery who apparently is a game show host and, and, and a bit of a knob. Uh, he tweeted out, racism has got nothing to do with race. Now, this has got to be the end of the... When, you know, we've seen loads of different, like, people trying to rationalise and spin racism, but it's now saying it's got nothing to do with race. Racism is the progressive left crying out for attention. If you disagree with the progressive left, one word, they consider you a racist. They are desperate to hold on to the black vote. I am so sick of this fucking line saying, oh, everyone who disagrees with you, you consider a racist, which is obviously not true. If you disagree with me, let's say, on you know the issue of recycling or you know how frequent bins should be collected, I'm not going to call you a racist because of that, am I? You can disagree with lots of different things. You can disagree with lots of different things. You might disagree with my musical taste. I'm not going to call you a racist because you're not a Slipknot fan. This is just completely and utterly ridiculous. But but to say it's got it's got nothing to do nothing to do with race. So racism racism itself is a myth. It's a comp the whole thing is a conspiracy. Right? Now just keep that in mind as we move along. Racism is a, this has got this has been liked by 27,000 people favorited that. So this is racism itself has got nothing to do with race. Okay. Mississippi wedding venue refuses to rent to an engaged interracial couple. Again, racism doesn't exist. Does not exist. This is a truth that had to be Mississippi. It would if I'd have said a state in a state in America has got a venue that's refusing to rent to an interracial guy. You'd have said Mississippi. The owners of a Mississippi wedding venue have have uh, reneged uh, their offer of renting to an, to an engaged couple because they're interracial and they've listed their Christian beliefs as a reason. Now, this is about a week old, this story, and it's funny that all the people who are quite happy to come out and defend the gay, the, 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 the homophobic wedding cake bakers are not coming out to defend these people because the, the argument should still stand, should it not? On Saturday, Mississippi State University student Le Cambria S. Welsh posted a video of her conversation with one of the alleged owners. What do you mean alleged owners? Of Boone's Camp Event Hall in Booneville, Mississippi, after she claimed that the venue changed its mind on hosting the event for her brother, who is also black. Okay. Yeah, her brother's also black. Well, I figured that, yeah. Uh, first of all, and this is, this is what the woman said, first of all, we don't do gay weddings or mixed race because of our Christian race. I mean our Christian... Oh, there's a Freudian slip, weren't there? Our Christian race. Come on, free marketeers, where are you? Yeah, where's Dave Rubin defending this motherfucker? Come on, Dave. Okay, we're Christians as well, said the woman. So what in the Bible tells you that? She replied, well, I don't want to argue my faith. We just don't participate. We just choose not to. Now, I'm sorry, you can't sit there and say we don't want to discuss the fact. You, you have to. If that's going to be part of your venue policy, 
And then you can't sit there and say, we're not discussing our faith. You have to. You've made your faith the fucking issue on this. But again, racism, it's a, mi it's a myth. It's just, you know, this is where this shit leads, you know. Like all those people, because if all those people who sat there and defended the gay wedding cake, mate, this is where this fucking progressive, this train is never fucking late. Right? This is the stop it goes on. Now, of all these stories that you could find connected to the uh, consequences of climate change and global warming, this one is probably the most pointless. The hellish future of Las Vegas in the climate crisis, a place where we never go outside. What, you mean like a casino? Like, like it is now? Where they don't have any windows or clocks? So the time that's passing doesn't... So it's basically going to be Las Vegas. So it's effectively, Las Vegas will be unchanged. Brilliant. Now, I personally, ladies and gentlemen, I, you know, I have a bit of a soft spot when it comes to people who are homeless. I always try my best to sort of give a bit of change when I can or sit and have a conversation with them when I can. You know, that's just me personally. But so and I always love nothing more than a reminder of how cruel and stupid human beings can be. And this is a story, sadly, from from this country, uh, from uh, reported in the Liverpool Echo. Echo. Homeless man rejected from Liverpool council shelter because he is from the Wirral. So this guy who is homeless, right now that's a key word here, homeless, went to a local council shelter to get shelter because he's homeless, but he was rejected because he's from a different part of Lip. He's homeless. He's homeless. He doesn't have a place of residence. You can't reject so if you're going to reject some rejecting someone from a from a from a shelter who's homeless is one thing rejecting them because they're not from your town if there's one group of people who I think should be you know removed from the concept of civic fucking of, of civic pride or sort of regional fucking you know di divisions within humanity it's the fucking homeless if you're homeless one place you're homeless everywhere you can't reject someone because from a you can't say you're not you're in the wrong homeless place go back to where you came from Right. So he slept in a doorway, which apparently wasn't a fucking problem. They didn't mind him sleeping in a doorway that wasn't part of his own hometown, even though he doesn't have a hometown. This fucking... this... this species. Now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Jeffrey Epstein died. <laughs> and one of the people connected to him, who has been, you know, desperately trying to avoid getting any fucking press, is, a guy, is Prince Andrew. And um, there have been loads of stories about connecting Prince Andrew. There have been loads of, uh, you know, uh, suggestions. Nothing's ever really concrete. However, again, I, I just, you know, it's the, it's, there are some stories that are a little bit unnecessary. For example, this one, Prince Andrew's ex, Lady Victoria Harvey, claims she was too old for Jeffrey Epstein as she was 23 when she met pedo billionaire. The pedo billionaire okay that's not a news story his name if if your nickname is pedo billionaire it should be taken as read that 23 years old is a bit too pedophile not interested in 23 year old is not a fucking news story that's just standard yeah of course he wasn't his nickname is the pedo billionaire what was she thinking and I love the way they frame this. By the way, that woman in the bottom is not Lady Victoria Harvey, just so you know. But I love how they're framing it as if I'm too old. How dare you? And I think it's important that you've got to be open and honest about, about sex. We need to be more open and honest and upfront about it. Like this woman who wrote an op-ed in The Guardian. I'm 75 and have never had an orgasm. What should I do? Probably build a time machine, go back for 50 years or so, and try and bring this up at a sooner, to just let yourself know this is never going to happen. 75? What should I do now? 
Post it in the comments. What do you think? I'm fucking, I'm fucking stumped. Speaking of people who have never had orgasms, recently in Boston, there was a straight pride march. Yes, it finally happened. They said it was coming, the straight pride march. Apparently, uh, you know, there were 200 people turned up for it. More than a thousand apparently counter-protested it. Um... But this was the this was how it was reported. Straight Pride March in Boston demanding Donald Trump's wall is built. Now there you go, right there. Right? That sort of shows you anyone who wants to argue about, well, why can't straight people have a Pride March? You can have a Pride March if you want. Nothing in theory, anything wrong with that, you know, in and of itself. But the fact is, this isn't a straight Pride March, is it? This has got nothing to do with being straight. <laughs> this has got nothing to do with being straight. Why would you... I've never seen... Why are you talking about Donald Trump? What's Donald Trump's wall, building a wall along the Mexico border, what's that got to do with being straight? Nothing. Also, how many women do you see on this straight pride march? Really none, aren't you? Yeah, no, not unless they're wearing fucking cast iron underwear, I would imagine. Right, but there was this picture taken at the straight pride march that I'm just going to show you, because it's fantastic, this picture. That this, that right there, and nothing. If there's an image that sums up everything that's wrong with the fucking planet right now, it's right there. That man, right, wearing a free Kekistani T-shirt with Peppy the Frog face paint at a straight pride march, holding a pillow with an anime style drawing of Sargon of a card on it. And this is a man who is baffled as to why, oh why, women won't fuck him. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Dick Coughlin, brother Neuro. Where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Good night, may God be less.